Howdy folks, I'm Jake here with the Banjo Band General Store. And you might ask yourself what that catchy little number I was just playing there, but truth is that's not a tune at all. I was just checking the tap tuning of the head on this banjo. And that might be some terminology that some of you are familiar with and others aren't. Uh, basically tap tuning is a method used to know if your head's set at the right tension. But here's the thing, tap tuning can be very subjective. Um, it's hard to hear for a lot of folks and there's a, a lot of, of, of debate as to the particulars, where you should tap, should you scratch, uh, should the strings be tuned up, um, what note are you trying to achieve, you know, all kinds of things like that. And most people generally concede that a G sharp is for bluegrass where you want to try to get your banjo, the head. But that can be tricky too because you can get a G sharp note out of this head um, and it still be an uneven tension. So you can have an uneven head, you know, it could be tighter back here and looser up here, and you might still get it to that G sharp note, but it's just not gonna sound as good. So, enter this handy little contraption, and uh, this is called a drum dial, and I have personally used this for, man, since 2005 or 2006 when I started doing setup, and I've used it on this very one. I've had it for that long, 15, 13, 15 years, something like that. And I've used it on every single banjo, thousands of them, that I've ever set up to check the um, tension on the head. And what it does is just that. It's just a real simple device to use, a little reflection gauge. And you just set it in various spots on your head and make sure the tension's even. Because if the tension's even, you're going to get a lot better sound than if it's tighter on one side than it is on another. So we'll just uh, hop over to my workshop bench here. And I'll give you guys a little crash course in this handy little thing. And show you how to use it properly because after all if you don't use it properly it doesn't work properly and I know that because I had it sitting on my nightstand for like two weeks and I was late to work every day because I thought it was an alarm clock so anyway we'll go over there and I'll show you how it works okay folks welcome to my workshop bench <laughs> I thought we'd start with just a new one in the box that way you can see what all you get what to expect so right off the bat you've got your basic literature and kind of tells you a basic rundown of how to use it and things like that. And we open it here, nicely packed. And uh, this is a real heavy duty thing, uh, weighs quite a bit. That's why mine's lasted so long. They're very well made. Um, it also comes with an, a, a, uh, I guess you'd call that like an edge gauge, which you can slip around here and that'll kind of give you the distance against the tension hoop that you'd want to set it. See there? I don't use that thing personally, but it's there if you want to use it. I've used it for so long, I know about where I want to set it. So the first thing I do when I get out of the box, I'll just set it on something level, like my bench here. It could be anything though, it could be a stove top or a glass countertop or whatever you got. And I make sure it just runs back around to zero, which this one does, you can see. And that means it's calibrated, right? Then we go over and we put it on the banjo head. And I just check it in four places. I'll, I'll check it here and here and here and here. That's about all you need to make sure the head's even. You can, uh, with that little edge gauge, you can set it at every single hook if you want. Um, but typically speaking, whenever you're adjusting those hooks and those nuts on the back side, you can feel if they're about the same tension. And if they are, and, and it checks out in these four places, you're good to go typically. So where I usually like to set a head is between 88 and 89 pounds which as you can see is right about where we're at in that spot. And the same way over here should be yeah, right about it. the same way here. Yep. And lastly, yep. All right, so um, that's really all there is to it. Uh, now, I will give you a little tip. The kind of head you're using is going to affect where you're going to set the tension. Um, on any banjo, I typically like the head to be set anywhere from 88 to 91, 92-ish pounds. Um, but I like it done evenly. You know, if I wanted 88, I wanted an even 88. And so the lower end of the scale you're going to set your head tension at, the more mellow the sound. And the higher end of the scale, the, the brighter and more poppy, if you will, the sound. Now on a typical frosted head, like a Remo style or something like that, like this one is, 
um, you're going to typically want about 89 to 90 pounds, uh, somewhere in that range, for your bluegrass tone. Like I said, if you want to go mellower, you can back it off a little from there. But if you want that same kind of pop with a heavier, thicker head, something like a Ludwig head or a five-star head or a, a fiber skin head or a genuine calf skin head, uh, you might want to go a little higher than that to get the more responsive sound out of your banjo. But um, generally speaking, uh, you know, that's kind of a good range to play with is, is 88 to 92 pounds. Uh, also, another thing this is handy for is to diagnose if the head is separated. Uh, some heads over time can come loose from the stretcher band down here. And whenever that kind of damage occurs, basically it's a breakage. And when that happens, it's usually hidden by this tension hoop, and you can't see it. So um, you can set this dial down, and if it measures good in most places, but if it's really low in that place, and you can't get it to tighten up, then you've got a broken head. You need to replace it, which uh, this comes in handy for replacing heads, of course, too. But it's also good for maintenance. Uh, I have people all the time bring me a banjo, and they'll say, man, this thing sounded great a year ago, but it just sounds kind of thin and, and flappy now, doesn't sound as good. And typically all I do is I'll check the head tension and uh, you know it'll be five, six pounds low and I'll bring it back up to tension and it sounds great again. So um, it's good for, for long-term maintenance of, of any banjo you got. So anyway, like I said, I've used them forever. I'm a huge believer in them. We sell them on the site, banjobenclark.com at the store. So if you wanted to check those out, there's you know more info on them there. And like I said, just couldn't say enough good about the drum dial. Um, it's 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 a lifesaver if you're a banjo player. So, and you don't have to guess what note you're. You know what note is that? You don't have to try to hear that phantom note. It just kind of does the job for you. So, as always, folks, we appreciate you watching. Thanks for the support, and we'll catch you next time.